I'm very excited to announce that I'm putting together a team that will raise the funds necessary to purchase the JET program from Cirrus and Art Capita. And as any team, obviously, we've got our financial advisors, Merrill Lynch, we've got engineering consultants and a lot of people we're working with. But the transition into this new company will basically be taking the JET program as it exists today, completing the financing and moving forward so that we can get this airplane into production. Obviously, we've got a lot of customers that are very excited about flying this airplane, and we want to figure out how to do that as quickly as possible for them. That being said, I'm Joe Jet customer. I want my jet. I want my jet bad. What's that mean? Well, I'm very glad that Joe Jet customer wants his jet very badly. And that's obviously the commercial purpose of an enterprise, is to figure out how to deliver a great product to a customer who will benefit from having it. And that's our goal. Raise the money necessary to get this program accelerated so that those customers can get the airplane as soon as possible. It's a big job, but fortunately we do have the track record. We've designed, developed, certified, produced, sold, supported airplanes in the past. We'll do that for the jet. Schedule-wise, what's that mean to a depositor right now? What can we expect to see from the jet program over the next com coming years? Well, as you know, when we started this jet program, we were very careful about what we said. I've always told people that we want to tell you what we know and be careful about what we think and very careful about what we don't know. And we don't know the schedule. Now, it's always dependent upon funding, how quickly you can hire engineers, how quickly you can put test fixtures and build prototypes and so on. And so the faster we can raise the money, the faster we can do the JET program. Theoretically, I think people should be thinking about late 2012, early 2013 as a time frame. Now there's a possibility that that could be accelerated and there's a possibility it'll take longer. Funding is a key part of that. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. From what you know all the way up till now, you've done a pretty extensive uh, test program on the initial prototype. What have you learned from the airplane and what will that result in as far as any changes or any modifications to the original plan? Well, let's, let's first talk about what are the goals of the project. As a personal jet, we are trying to make sure that it's a very easy airplane to operate. What we're not shooting for is the highest performance. We're shooting for a lower level of performance and the uh, pilot characteristics that would go with that. In other words, we want people to be able to move up from an SR-22 to the, the jet. Now, with that being the goal, we have a set of flight test requirements that go with that. I always do like to remind people at this point that the purpose of flight test is to find out what goes wrong or what's not right, and not having found that yet is not the same as not having it. So there's still unknowns out there. We're not complete with the flight test program, and obviously it goes on with conforming prototypes in the future. Having said that, we're very pleased with the results. There's a little tweaking that needs to be done. We'll continue to play with stall speeds and cruise speeds and handling characteristics and empty weight and so on. But it seems like it's on target. It seems like we're going to hit that goal of easy to operate, 300 knots, good range, good flexible payload. Feels good. We've talked about the personal level a little bit, but one of the things that the SR-22 did was it revitalized an air taxi model. All of a sudden, with the SATS Air and other models out there, there's a number of small air taxi companies out there that are doing great business in building regional networks. Does the jet fit in to this dynamic and emerging model? It's been fun to watch the growth in air taxis, and, and currently, as you mentioned, uh, there, there are a very large number of air taxi companies or near air taxi charter companies using SR-22s. And we certainly think that there will be a market for our jet in the air taxi market as well. Air taxis haven't developed as quickly as some people had hoped, given Eclipse and Dayjet and some of the other things that haven't quite worked out as planned. But I think that it's, it's very clear that there is a need there, and the question will be when will that need translate into true economic activity. But it's coming, and, and, and we'll have a good airplane for it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect. 
including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, under your command, has galvanized the industry to accept the digital cockpit that became just everywhere. The analog cockpit has virtually disappeared. It galvanized an industry to look at new safety features, whether it be uh, more work on seats, whether it be the parachute, and also to look at the aircraft as an even more comprehensive tool than it's been in the past. These have been great. I mean, you've, as a bag of tricks goes, you've had a great one, and it's, it's just had a tremendous effect on this industry. Anything else in your bag of tricks? <laughs> Uh, I've got a good bag of tricks left. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we think will still be coming. An important part of having that bag of tricks be real, though, is competition. We really do need to have healthy competition in all segments of the industry, whether it's at the airframe level or the, the supplier level or the service provider level. It really is exciting to watch that competition drive the development of the bag of tricks this product will change people's perspective about transportation and what I believe will happen and I believe it will happen relatively quickly and in very compelling ways is that the economy more broadly will recognize general aviation as a benefit because what we're doing basically is lowering the price point at which people can get jet kind of performance, jet kind of smoothness, jet kind of comfort and I think people will find that again very very compelling.